All right, guys, so I wanted to do a quick little video on the seats. If you saw the video before this, it was just a review of my mods, but I did feel like I owed you an explanation on what's going on with these Corbo seats. So um, I ordered some Corbo seats to give you a little, little information. I bought some Corbo seats for my, for my C5 Corvette. I bought the A4s. It's roughly around $1,300 to get these seats to your house. Um, you can about eight or $900, something like that, uh, for the actual seat. Then you have to get the rails, which costs about maybe $160 per rail. So by the time you do the shipping and get everything to your house, uh, you're in a neighborhood of somewhere around your $1,300 with your shipping and all that type of stuff. So here we go. We're going to jump right into this. I'm going to give you some real, real, real information. Sometimes some information that you get online is information, but it's not detailed information. So stick with me for about five or six minutes. I'm going to let you know some things about these Corbo seats. Some good, some bad. But if you're interested in buying Corbo, if you're interested in buying the A4s, I'm going to let you know some things about them that maybe you ain't really hearing online. So here we go. Let's jump into it. So these are the Corbo A4s. Beautiful seat. I've seen them on a lot of Corvettes. Um, I never thought they looked bad. I thought they were great seats, especially with the stress areas and different things like that. I never had a really a problem with the actual seat. The fitment is a little tight, but this is a Corvette we're talking about. So this right here, the tunnel is so, so tight. It's tough to get any seat in here, honestly. Um, GM did a great job when it comes to getting the actual seat, their seat to fit in. Like, look how tight that is. See how tight that is down in there? That's really, really tight. And that's what's to be expected when you're buying a seat for a Corvette. It's going to be rough getting it in here. You might be better off taking your factory seat and just having more aggressive bolsters added to the seat and getting better fabric and using your factory rail. The problem was never with the seat. The problem was that the their rails, Corbo rails are a bit spotty. <clears throat> and when I say spotty, I mean these rails that you see right here, that you can see them down here, these rails, when you put them in, I would advise if you got them, put your rails in first to see if they even match. Put them in first to see if your rails would even go over the bolts. I never had issues with my seats at all when I first, my factory seats at all. My factory seats worked great. I would have never had an issue with them at all. So when you go to put them in there, put them in there without the seats bolted to it just to see if they even match up. Mine's didn't match in at all. My rails did not match up. My rails actually were too short. So when your rails are too short, the fronts right here, this bolt and this bolt will go in. The back bolts would not go in. The back bolts behind the seat would not go in. So those back bolts wouldn't go in. So that made the rails were actually too short. So I got into a little thing with Corbo and they were just saying, and Matt, I guess I should measure my floorboard. I don't see why I should have to measure a floorboard when I took the factory seats out of the car with the factory, with the factory rails switched into it. It was never a problem. You guys are making seats, so wouldn't you have the factory measurements? That's a measurement you have, not a measurement I have. So it was a situation where I was even willing to basically, I was going to give the seats everything back. I was going to give it all back. But I wanted to keep the seats. I just wanted them to swap the rails out. They wanted me to do more measurements. I sent them pictures, emails, and I refused to measure because these are measurements that you guys should have. Just swap them out. We'd be cool. But... They didn't want to do it. So what happened was, was I actually took these rails and I cut them off. I took them to a machine shop after I made my own template. I made my own template of the rails. I made my own templates, my own spots where they bought in at. And I traced around these rails that are in the car. And pretty much I made my own rail design with my own measurements, the correct measurements and the driver's side seat. They were the right length but the holes didn't, the holes weren't punched out to the right size. So they would go up to the bolts, but they wouldn't fit over them at a certain point because they were actually, they were just, the holes were too small. So they all need to be widened. So these are some of the things that you have to watch out when buying them. I did a, I looked at countless videos of these. I even looked at a guy named Garage Topics, which is the most, which I think is the best one for you to look at. His name is Garage Topics. He works for like for Holly. I think he does internet design or something for them. But anyway, you can look it up. Garage Design, Garage Topics, A4 seat install. He says it even on his site that he's heard nightmares 
of these seats not fitting in not fitting in there because of the rails some people get good rails some people don't i was on the side of not getting very good rails um luckily i like to fabricate and luckily i'm pretty good with cardboard and tracing and measuring so i was able to make these seats fit inside the car still using the rails that corbo provided me which were they were a couple of inches off and the holes were definitely too small so corbo i just kind of stopped dealing with them i kind of stopped talking to them on the phone and calling them and calling utah and all this other kind of stuff talking to them on the phone about making something right that obviously was wrong um you know other than that the seat is fine it holds you in place they're great they, they are great as far as into that regard they're great but as far as the seat i'm telling you as far as those rails beware beware when you buy it beware when you buy these that the rails may not fit they fit in here great now they fit in here great and um i wouldn't go putting these in your car and start yanking them back and forth get them in the position that you want keep them in that position hopefully it's just you driving the car i'm not saying they're flimsy i'm just saying that this is a manual seat this is not the factory manual seat it's a manual seat but it's an aftermarket manual seat and i can tell you i wouldn't want to probably keep yanking on this bar here trying to move this seat back and forth real aggressive it's tight as hell in here so if you look at it like i say even on a seat belt adjuster this thing is tight it's tight i mean there are options for you to get this part shaved to kind of get maybe an inch or so in more in here it's off the holiday season hey look i ain't in the best of shape right now i'm probably around like i say between 34 and 36 waist i wish i was a 32 these seats you can fit in here and be a 36 if you're anywhere near 40 it's going to be tight i can tell you that now you can do the wide back ones and it's probably going to be uh it's, i don't know if there's going to be enough room in here to do a 40 to go to go wide i chose to keep it standard not go wide to keep it this way to keep it the way it was i didn't do a shave one because i didn't feel that it was it wasn't necessary for my body type i just didn't feel like it was necessary i felt like I pretty much gain a little weight every year around November, December, because I really like Thanksgiving and, <laughs> and Christmas a lot. I love eating and drinking beer sometimes. So I kind of already knew what my how my weight fluctuates. Summertime, I'm really active. I play tennis. I run. I ride my bike. I do miles on my bike all the time. So I lose a lot of weight in the summertime, so I figure it wouldn't be an issue. But everybody's not me. Everybody's not me. Some people out there weigh a lot more than me. Some people are... A lot taller than me. For my body type, I'm found about 5'9", five, 5'9 nine, five, nine and a half, something like that. Maybe like 180, 185, you know. I don't think that that's really bad, but I think that for these seats, you're going to feel how tight it is, especially especially on the, uh, especially around like the rib cage part, you're going to feel how, how tight it is. But it's a very good seat. It does the job. It keeps you in there. The riding, the driving position is is greatly improved. It's greatly improved along with the steering wheel. It doesn't hike you up real far. Your knees aren't gonna be your knees aren't gonna be against the against the steering wheel at all. Because I'm running I'm running a fairly small steering wheel. I'm running a fairly small steering wheel. This steering wheel is not even 350. This the steering was more like 320. So I'm running a small steering wheel on purpose because I wanted leg room. Um, but other than that they are they are really good they fit in here really well do the factory seats fit better absolutely fit way better so gm did a great job of designing these seats they couldn't do a better job of just trying to get them in here and um the total design is has been fine and getting them the seats i'm overall i'm fairly I'm fairly satisfied with what we had going with corbo um I just wish the customer service was just a little bit better. That's, that's all it came down to be. It's just the customer service, I wish it was a little bit better than what it was, and I wouldn't have to keep going through the things that I went through with them. Um, initially, I got it fixed on my own. And just for you to know, I spent like another $100 just to get these things to fit. And, um, you know, it is what it is. $100 doesn't break the situation. But I just wish I could have worked it out with them. But I did want to give you guys just – the overall opinion of what I thought about the seats, because sometimes you see these videos that chop, that cut, that edit it. You don't really know what goes on into a lot of YouTube installations. Sometimes you just don't know because they chop the video up the way they want to chop it up. So I kind of wanted to give you guys some honest, honest opinions of what I thought about it and 
what I thought about my ownership experience so far. So far, overall, so good. But I did go through a little something to get them in, in the car. So again, thank you for watching the video. Thank you for um, constantly supporting the channel. It's not very many subscribers that I do have. But the ones that do subscribe, thank you. And if I see you at Cars and Coffee and stuff out in Richmond, or I see you online or something in the comments, uh, whether you're near or far, I appreciate you. Whether it's 13 of y'all or 3,300 of y'all. It don't make a difference. I still really appreciate it. I'm not a professional YouTuber. I barely even know how to work this GoPro. But um, thank you for just overall following the little journey on the cars that I have had and um, going over this little Corvette situation. So thank you. Really appreciate it. Again, follow follow me on, uh, on Instagram, MG underscore street candy k with an i or k a n d i same thing as what this channel is and you'll see me posting up a lot of things in progress of the vet and as far as how far along i choose to go with this thing so thank you appreciate it take care bye bye